Bienvenidos a Medellín, este es el mundo de Christine Meats. Medellín, a city that sits at 1,500 meters in elevation and the second largest city in Colombia, but was also known as one of the most dangerous cities in the world in recent history. Medellín fell into shambles as the cartel struggled with the Colombian government for control at the time. However, we will not focus on the history as there are documentaries about that already. Instead, I want to focus on the progress and the transformation the city has made since then. The city and the barrios or the neighborhoods have created a number of infrastructure projects to mark at least surface level progress. Despite still some occasional tensions, they are making an excellent start to progress and have opened up to tourism and we get a glimpse into these neighborhoods and these people's lives. Now let's take a closer look starting with Camino Terese. On the way up to uh, Camino Terese, we even stopped for some ice cream, which is free. Uh, it's typical of uh, this neighborhood. Just a few infrastructure projects begin in Medellin and Plan Terese are the escalators. This is a free service to locals and tourists alike, otherwise navigating the many steps as an elderly person or someone with the load every day will prove to be difficult. However, this project was not funded by the Colombian government, but rather by the city of Medellin. Regardless, the locals living at the top are no longer isolated from the rest of the city. Since then, most locals have welcomed tourists into the communa to share their story. When we arrived at the top, we were greeted by a group of break dancers. They really did want to show us that they were welcoming, and more importantly, they had talent. Of course, we were also greeted by other street performers as well. While we were shown music as one form of art, but the graffiti in Camino Trece is the most important form of all. The community members draw the graffiti to symbolize the turbulent history they have gone through. They want to tell the story, but also how they plan to overcome these difficulties as well. The community decides together on how the story is shared. Despite the bonding and the outside progress, there are still some tensions on a lower scale where there is still an active gang presence who fights over the territory. Keeping the dark side in mind, the prevailing community strength uh, keeps them in check to a degree. Here I thought I would try a little game of football with the locals. I learned I'm quite bad at this. Anyway, moving on. To the end of this tour, I saw graffiti work in progress. It's quite amazing. More infrastructure projects to note the city's progress was a metro system, including the cable car. The metro system was opened in 1996, three years after the fall of Medellin cartel, but violence continuing from other sources. Similar to the escalators, the cable car provides transport to the isolated barrios that would otherwise be difficult to access. There is even a tourist cable car that can provide sweeping views of the city at day or night. Thing is, the ride incurs additional fees to use and it also takes you to Arby Park where it's worth checking out if you want to break from the city life. Another tour that's highly recommended is the free walking tour in downtown. They show you other places of progress that started in grief and ends in hope. The square, for example, started as a square of crime and later called the square of lights or hope. On a lighter note, you can also see the cuisine, drinks, and fun things to do. This also includes Botero Square, where you can see artwork in a different light. However, the tour will remind you that everything has a dark side, but hope shines through and later gets rebuilt as both stories are told. I still wanted more answers to how the barrios made hope despite a dark side, so I went to Moravia for more answers. I learned that people once lived on Trash Hill, what is now that garden, has left and moved elsewhere. A few resistors remain after talks with the government. A few remaining on trash have no obligation to pay tax like those on solid ground do. However, they still have access to the welfare system and other basic services including medical. Other more advanced medical services require payment. Same applies to education 
but most families cannot afford that. In response, the family is placed on a tier system to determine their ability to pay. This scenario depicts that there is hope as some children are able to obtain full university scholarships to increase the tax labor system in response to the decreasing informal labor system. What are the cases locals are always willing to come together and play games including cards, chess, and other times football? These community efforts help reduce the rate of violent crime as it is no longer done openly, but rather behind closed doors. Thank you everybody for joining me through this video. I really appreciate you for following me and I'm hoping that this video will take a different step from what uh, what I normally do, which is generally just promoting tourism speaking, I guess, but I want to try to take a different light on this video and try to show like the history of Medellin, and, and I'm hoping I can accomplish it just by doing that. Now I realize I've gone through this video quite quickly, um, however, if I really did take the time to explain everything from start to finish, two hours would pass easily, and to be frank, there's other things that I need to be doing rather than sit and trying to make film and edit videos for three hours or more. So, um, I will leave the rest up to you. If you find yourself in Medellin here in Colombia, please take these tours yourself and discover the history because these people are willing to tell you that story and, um, which means they want you to hear what what they experience and what, what they do to uh, move uh, past the, these issues. I think it's really worth it and you'd be adding to the history of Medellin by doing this. So please, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, keep an eye on for further content that I might be posting later. Remember on October 15th, I plan to post the Amazonas video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.